Hello and welcome to the Cap Gemini Super Techies show on ET Now. This is India's first reality TV series for IT professionals, and it's a platform where they get a chance to exhibit their tech talent to the world. Let's find out if this episode indeed throws up our super techie. I'm your host, Abhimanyu Radhakrishnan. On every episode, three teams batted out for a place in our grand finale. These three teams, of course, are among 21 who were selected after a grueling pan-India process. And only one of them will eventually get that coveted title of the super techie and walk away with a cool 10 lakh rupees. Let me introduce our jury for the show. We've got Anand Bhatnagar, who's the IT head of Maharashtra region for Bharti Airtel. He's joining us here in place of Dr. Jay Menon, who's the CIO of Bharti Enterprises, who designed today's challenge for the contestants, but couldn't be with us for the show. Also on the jury to evaluate the solutions are Dr. Nile Yajnik, who's the chairman of the Information Technology Department at NMI MS, and Ron Toledo, who's CTO of Continental Europe for Capgemini. Thanks so much for joining us on the show, gentlemen. So without any further ado, let's get the ball rolling. Our very first round is called The Challenge. Just to get our viewers up to speed, this challenge was presented to our three teams at the Bharti Airtel head office in Gurgaon a week ago, after which the teams worked on the solutions. Let's quickly introduce our three teams with a small audiovisual package, which also shows their interaction with Jay Menon of Bharti. And I'm Ashish. I'm Satvinder. Hi, I'm Abhinav. Hey, I'm Agya. My name is Ram. We are here at Bharti Airtel office. We are here to meet Mr. Menon, who we think is going to give us a very interesting problem to work on today. We are thrilled and excited about this opportunity. Hi, I'm Jay Menon. I'm the group CIO at Bharti Enterprises, and I look after innovation for Bharti Airtel Global. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. The USG, or the ultimate social graph, is all about you guys trying to analyze and understand what is it that consumers are actually doing. And more importantly, what are the benefits of this graph? What are the benefits to the end user, to the ecosystem surrounding it, the merchants, and the rest of the ecosystem around it? Maybe even grids, like transportation grids, utility grids. What is the benefit of the graph to the ecosystem around it? And then, what are the monetization models around such an ultimate social graph? So, all the best, have fun, and I look forward to interacting with all of you. Okay? Cheers. Well, so that was the challenge for this episode. Please join your hands for our three teams, Multivac, Bright Sparks, and the Tech Titans. Well, before we get to the solutions presentation, let me also inform our viewers that the three teams here had a chance to seek a little help from a mentor, Ram Prakash Sishadri from Capgemini, who groomed them for today's challenge. Uh, Ram is here with us in the audience. Thanks so much for joining us uh, on the show. Uh, what was it like uh, grooming these three teams uh, through a fairly uh, tough challenge uh, in just a week? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a, quite a challenging uh, uh, assignment that uh, Dr. Jay Menon had given to the teams. And uh, what I basically did was to ensure that uh, they come up, with, come up with the core original ideas and I just ensured that they built on top of that and also put together a nice storyline that could be captivating to the audience. So I limited my role to that and hopefully today you'll see them in action explaining what they have to say about the challenge. Yeah, in fact, we're looking forward to that. Uh, tech titans, uh, you know, what is it like uh, working on a fairly difficult problem in such a short period of time with, you know, your day jobs uh, still going on? Uh, it was pretty uh, challenging. Um, uh, moreover, it was pretty exciting. Uh, the challenge as such, it was fun all the way. Right, it was fun. Uh, Bright Sparks, uh, fun for you or uh, more hard work and less play? Uh, it was a part of both. Uh, it was fun because it was a good industry challenge and then it was hard work because we had to do our regular job as well. So. It's uh, fun checking Facebook when you have to do it to play games or ping people, but uh, much more difficult when you have to actually build a social graph. 
Yeah, exactly. So, uh, the, but the good thing about the challenge was that we were told, you know, we can forget the current assumptions and we can think five or ten years in the future. So, there was one direction where we could, you know, let go of our minds and another where we had to present a good storyline in a short time interval. Right. Yeah. Well, it looks like all the participants have some exciting solutions lined up for us and it's going to be a tough challenge on this episode coming up, but uh, that's after a short break. Do stay tuned to ET Now. USG or the ultimate social graph, what are the benefits of this graph? What are the benefits to the end user? And then, what are the monetization models around such an ultimate social graph? Welcome back. You're still watching the Cap Gemini Super Techies show on ET Now. This is where IT professionals get a chance to prove their tech metal on a national stage. Let's uh, quickly go across to our three teams here who are ready with their solutions uh, to the challenge that was posted by Jay Menon of Bharti Airtel. We call this round the solution. Now in this round, each of the teams will present an executive summary of their solutions to the jury, who will then judge them on four parameters. These are problem comprehension, quality of the solution, adapting to alternatives, and the presentation. Multivac, your time starts now. Ultimate social graph is the 360 degree view of everyone who is online. By 360 degree view, I mean that ultimate social graph will have all the information of a consumer. Uh, which can be obtained without breaching any pri privacy or regulatory uh, frameworks. There are lots of data sources from which data can be obtained. And all this data is lying uh, at, uh, with various social networks right now. It's not at one place. So our task is to get, aggregate all this data. And since important thing to note here is that this data is going to be unstructured raw text data. So we'll employ natural language processing algorithms to extract entities, topic identification, and do sentiment analysis of this data to make sense out of this data and to get structural data. Now coming to the current business ecosystem, telecom industry plays a very, very important role. Using the services provided by telecom industry, I can communicate with my friends, I can communicate with my relatives, I can consume media, I can uh, browse web, I can browse social media, right? But here, telecom industry acts mainly as a data pipe. If the ultimate social graph is generated from the data by the telecom company, uh, this will lead to very fundamental changes. Uh, what we think is that a big factor in the success of a business is the customer relationship. Now, uh, using ultimate social graph, uh, a much more personal and engaging relationship can be made between different verticals like SMCG, education, or any other sectors. So the main point here is that uh, data analytics is the main gold rush of the 21st century. Telecom can enter either the mobile media space or the mobile device space, which is it has already entered in many markets. Growth in data analytics sector is much, much more compared to any other sectors that it can enter. And what we think is that using the existing capabilities that telecom has, it has a leverage by which it can enter these sectors and generate value for everybody. Tech Titans, anything you'd uh, like to ask or any queries that you have? I was saying that analytics doesn't fall under the business model of telecom companies. So why should a telecom company perform the analytics instead of outsource it? Uh, Ron, uh, do you think that question should pass? He says that analytics is not the bread and butter of a telecom company, so it may not be worth the investment. Well, hey, on the other hand, we're looking for stuff which is different from the bread and butter stuff that we're currently having. So I would say that's a pretty interesting question, yeah? Doing it in-house is not the only option. Maybe they can outsource it, maybe they can partner up with anybody. Fair enough. Right, Fox, any questions? User is the one who is creating the data, so what benefits do you think your solution is going to bring to that individual user? Data is already being generated, uh, even though users don't have to do anything. They are using a utility service, they are using a particular service, and the data generated is still now, maybe we can say it's a side effect. Okay, our next team making a summary of their presentation is the Bright Sparks. Whenever you're ready, face the judges and begin. Ultimate social graph, as Dr. Jay Menon told us, uh, we have classified that under three dimensions. First being the personal, the second is the social, and the third and the most important is the interest graph, the hobbies, the taste, the preferences of that individual user who is creating the data. It will give the ability to the telecom companies to predict the customer demand, customer evolving behaviors. So telecom company would like to predict what application is going to be the flavor 
after one or two year or five year down the line. So that's where the ultimate social graph the relevance comes into play. The ultimate social graph data will come from unstructured data. Unstructured data in the form of the connection networks like Facebook, LinkedIn is providing that un unstructured data. Then I can tailor my services to his habits. Our solution is more on the basis of making a data warehouse. In normal sense, when we say data warehouse, it talks about a structured data. But here we are talking about unstructured data, which we are trying to decipher using the various parser which are available in the market. And we can also develop using various uh, Rex utility or the YAC, YAC utility. We can write those also. Once the social graph is there, it can be used to drive many analytical reports. It can identify the user habits, user trends. It can also give you the trend about a site, whether the site usage is increasing over the time. You can immediately make those, those sites available to your uh, mobile service provider can use that and provide it on a mobile apps. So if you look at the value chain, the monetization value chain across the industry, we'll see that there are primarily five pillars. Firstly being the telcos who would own that data. The other would be the application framework developers who will gain their bread and butter out of developing those solutions and implementing those and maintaining those over years. Third being the custodian of the USG. There need to be some regulatory and compliance aspect added to their solution. The fourth pillar being the mobile evaluated service providers. And finally, the most important pillar of all, the user who is actually creating the data. He is the one who is creating that content and needs to be benefited the most. So that is how the whole value chain ecosystem would look like. OK, I'm going to ask uh, the other teams to pose some questions if they have any queries about uh, some of the issues that the Bright Sparks uh, brought up. Tech Titans, uh, you can go first. I have a question. I just want to uh, get their view on if they have thought about uh, a specific uh, value-added service segment which can benefit more from this data. Uh, we want to admit that question, uh, Bright Sparks. Any specific <coughs> example in terms of value-added services? Some telecom companies have already started mobile banking uh, uh, concept. And the, the government definitely feels that they can't reach, the banks can't reach every village and every post office. But the mobile have reached there, where the telecom lines have not gone. OK, Multivac, anything? So is there some example in which USG is beneficial, uh, which does not include the telecom industry, which maybe benefits the whole ecosystem, or maybe benefits some other vertical? Are you thinking on those terms as well? Correct, yeah. Yeah, the bright spots, the jury has admitted that question. We would have feet for a lot of industries, for example. If we pick retail, for example, retail is one segment wherein a user behavior is definitely needed to be understood in, a, in order to be come up with a new offering for that individual user. So that is one example I'll quote to see that USG would be helpful. Thanks for that, Bright Sparks. Uh, we have one final team left to present, and that's uh, the Tech Titans. Uh, an executive summary of your presentation is awaited. Whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Our solution is primarily around something called telecom platform. So what this means is this is an ecosystem developed by telecom operators for developers and third-party content providers to add data to it. So what we uh, think uh, as the foundation and pillars of this te uh, telecom platform are basically data and its structure. It should be aggregated and it should be on the cloud. What we are proposing now is something called telecom social graph. So this is basically an aggregated aggregation of both telecom graph and the social graph. So the, our underlying premise about coming up with this solution is that, uh, that there is a shift that's happening from voice towards data. So when data becomes the primary driver for uh, mobile operators, then what are the alternate revenue streams that the mobile operators can find by using the ultimate social graph? The kind of uh, solutions that uh, we thought are feasible is like the operators can leverage the, the telecom graph and the social graph that's available about the user to provide uh, innovative service delivery platform for their developers. They can open up this uh, platform for third party application developers who can use this data and provide innovative services for the telecom service providers users. The second one is that the same data can be used to provide predictive analytics and uh, business intelligence for uh, the telecom operators where the operators can use this data and can tie up with uh, retailers, uh, FMCG providers and uh, uh, other businesses to provide value added services for their users. And um, you can leverage all these data uh, which is fragmented across different spaces, put them in one single place and drive your analytics by basing, uh, basing it out of the data that you have gathered. 
Our proposition is that as the data that's available with the operator become more valid, then the companies will be interested in sharing the data among these entities and uh, which will provide a richer profile about the users across different uh, platforms. Interesting suggestion, uh, Anand, that we've seen, uh, you know, telecom rivals work together in the past, for example, when setting up common infrastructure like uh, tower companies. Do you think uh, in order to keep the Googles and the Facebooks from becoming the owners of all the data, there's a chance that telecom companies might combine, you know, is there even a possibility that they could join hands to create some, something like an open data platform that they were talking about? If data is the way forward, everybody has to think in a similar line to create a, this kind of similar uh, approach which can be accessed by the various companies to give the various offers to the customer. Right. Keeping the regulatory and security compliance uh, in mind. Right, Fox, you want to ask a question? Uh, as you talked about open data, so what challenges do you see in terms of security and privacy of that data? Because that would be quite a sensitive data. And how do you, want, how do you see to address that challenge? Security, we have competing standards that are available on the payments industry like the PCA, DSS standards. You can follow similar standards for the data that you have about your users. And on the privacy part of it, we can provide opt-in, opt-out facility for the users. So apart from maintaining an NDNC, now you'll also have to maintain a national do not share registry, multivac. No questions. Okay, no questions from Multivac. Uh, so then, let's now give uh, the jury a few moments to deliberate if they so wish, and then put down the scores for the four parameters that we discussed. Remember, those four are the problem comprehension, quality of the solution, adapting to alternatives, especially in the cross-questioning and presentation. Gentlemen, up to you. Well, our jury members have deliberated and locked down the scores for the first four parameters. Can we have them up on the screen, please? In third place, our multivac at 41, right sparks at 55. But leading uh, this particular episode at this time are the Tech Titans with 60 points. So uh, don't forget, there's still one more round to go, and that could still turn the tables. Stay with us. We take a short commercial break. You're watching the Cap Gemini Super Techies show only on ET Now. employ natural language processing algorithms to extract entities, topic identification, and do sentiment analysis of this data. Company would like to predict what application is going to be the flavor after one or two years or five years down the line. Pillars of this te uh, telecom platform are basically data and its structure. It should be aggregated and it should be on the cloud. What we are proposing now is something called telecom social graph. Welcome back. You're watching the Cap Gemini Super Techies show, the hunt for India's top IT professionals. So far, we've got the tech titans in the lead with 60, but uh, both Multivac and Bright Sparks have a chance to turn the tables on them. Let's find out in our last round. We call it the verdict. In this round, the judges who've already got a chance to go in depth into the solutions uh, with their presentations now can ask each of the teams individual questions or even pose uh, generic questions to which all teams have to give answers and then they're marked on a final parameter which is feasibility of that solution. So it may be great on paper, does it work in the real world? Jury members, I'm going to start with uh, Ron. Would you like to pose a specific question to a team? For the teams in general, uh, we've seen some great structures and, and, and nice frameworks and, and, and good analysis analytics engines underneath. What would make the, the application different as a result of all of this? Give me an example of an application where we will have things that we couldn't imagine right now. See, in the future, there are uh, uh, some government initiative also going on, like Aadhaar. We can link our USG with the Aadhaar, and uh, we can use the biometrics. One of these things can be used by, as a KYC by the telecom industries also. When we go to mobile, they want a KYC uh, proof. So they can also have that. The immediately, Aadhaar ID will give them the access to their biometrics detail. That ID can be used as a single sign-on to access any of the application that they, could, they would like, whether it's a Facebook, LinkedIn, all those that are, are saved with their biometrics. Sounds a little uh, Mission Impossible scary. Well, you're actually talking not about maybe the killer application, but killer access to applications. 
Anand, some questions uh, you'd like to pose to any of the teams in particular? First of all, team, I'm not happy the way you people are thinking. You are the techies, right? Telecom industry is waiting for your, uh, your solution. Think beyond your boundaries. Think of a situation that when, when you are coming out from a theater and suddenly you receive a SMS stating that you can go to a nearby restaurant to have a dinner and you'll get 10% off. Similarly, plot your friends on the map. You'll be able to save, see where they are exactly going. We have discussed on various, uh, various terms, uh, that is structured data and structured data, but how you'll capture that? Think on a line which, which I post on the Facebook, how you are going to capture that line? Talk about reality. Okay, so our CIO isn't uh, very happy with uh, you know, the thinking of the team, saying they're still uh, thinking within the box. He wants them to challenge their uh, boundaries. Uh, guys? The one challenge that you mentioned is about uh, companies not willing to share data. Right. So the, the, the incentive for them to share data is that if they see the more value in the data that's, that's lying outside of their company, then uh, they, they have incentive to use that data and also share the data. Companies are slowly shifting from uh, a paper-based uh, billing mechanism to uh, electronic billing mechanism, so you have access to his email address. You, you can uh, look at, use OpenID as a mechanism to see that if, if the same profile is being used across different companies, uh, different uh, platforms. So there's a, there's a lot that the company can do with this information. That data is going to be uh, a, significant, uh, a significant one and that's going to be the source of long-term competitive advantage for the company. You know, how does that social graph, even if you have all the data, translate into a great experience for the end user? you know, coming back to his mobile phone, like the example of the theater and friends nearby. We have suggested there is that there are a number of locations, the IP address, for example, or networking for internet perspective. IP address is one thing which can be uh, aligned with one user. And uh, if, it, if it also, the user also has the mobile connection, then definitely you know that this mobile and this user are in the same geography and you can offer that kind of, and mobile towers gives you the location of mobile. Okay, Multivac, you want to answer that? As we had mentioned, using the insights, uh, there can be a better relationship that can exist between companies and users. Now, this relationship can come up in terms of coupons that can be given, uh, location-based coupons or the discounts based on interest of person, or maybe customized package or services, depending on the preferences of a user. Uh, great. One final question, uh, Professor Yajnik, anything you have to uh, ask them? You see, the ultimate social graph is not just about data from online networks online social networks. There's a lot of data available in normal life, not in the online space alone. So when you go to, let's say, a retail store and you decide not to buy something right, from the shelf, um, there's a lot of data which is available there. How could your solution help Airtel capture this kind of data which is outside the online social space? Okay, the professor is saying that in the ultimate social graph, even no data is data. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? So let's say four or five years down the line, a user goes to a retail store, and we know his uh, location using his uh, mobile, and we are also assuming that mobile is going to act as a credit card in the future. So if no payments happen, then we can assume that there was something wrong at that retail store. So. That's one way of tapping into the offline world. Good response, bright sparks. Based on the mobile, since you can get hold of the user, you know wherever he tracked through. And if we could link the CCTV cameras, which is one of the security mechanisms which most of these retails are anyways using, to the user identification based on the mobile. So if a mobile can also send back the signals to the CCTV in which shelf it has passed through, and whether anything was picked up from that shelf or not. So that is sounding like quite a, quite a futuristic solution, but then given technology's support, it is definitely possible. So that is one area which I see uh, a futuristic solution might be able to address the concern which was rightly raised. 
and the Tech Titans. Uh, you want to have a go? We also have this Google Map and the location-based services. Uh, plus, we are also hoping that uh, the inventory data will be at, time, uh, at some time uh, point on, at some point in time be shared. So I think all of these put together can give a holistic view about uh, what consumers liked, what consumers liked but couldn't pay, what didn't pay, and stuff like that. So I think that will give a good list of what uh, the, the actual likes of customers. Okay, great. The grilling of all the teams is over and done with. Uh, we had some uh, interesting responses there from uh, the jury members and from the teams as well. May I now request our judges uh, to give the scores on that final parameter, which is feasibility of the solutions. Uh, gentlemen, feel free to deliberate and lock down the scores. Well, the judges are done with their final scores, so let's see what the tally at the end of the show looks like. And we have the scores on the screen. Multiwack is at 56. The Tech Titans are at 78. And it seems like uh, the Bright Sparks have indeed turned the tables on the Tech Titans with a tiny one-point uh, margin, moving on to 79. Very close contest. I don't think any episode uh, so far has been decided by just one point. So congratulations uh, to the Bright Sparks. Let's have a round of applause. That's a wrap on this episode of the Cap Gemini Super Techies show. Today, uh, the Bright Spark makes it to our motherboard, which ranks all the episodic winners. And from there, the top three will make it. Well, I'm happy to uh, report that all the teams that have come here today will get a gift hamper from IBM. And our winning team today also gets a great product called the iOmega Store Center iX2 200, the cloud edition from EMC. EMC also a global partner of Capgemini uh, and is a technology major which helps organizations to store, manage, protect and analyze their most valuable asset, which is information, and uh, that in a more agile, trusted and cost-efficient way. Until next week, it's goodbye from all of us at the Capgemini Super Techies show. Keep watching ET Now.